For today's Creature Feature, we come to Brooksville, Florida. Welcome back to the channel and welcome if it's your first time. We begin this video in downtown Brooksville, Florida, where a movie was filmed back in the summer of 1972. Not released until 1974. This movie is a movie you may have not heard before. Death Dream. Originally released as Dead of Night, it changed its title somehow, some way, to Death Dream. And if you've seen this movie, you know what's about to go down. The first movie to ever depict the domestic ravages of the Vietnam War. Andy Brooks was killed in action and raised by the dead, the beckoning of his own mother, crying in her sleep. It's a bit of an adaptation to the monkey's paw. It is a horrifying, pivotal film, and also the debut of the horror makeup legend, Tom Savini. Tom Savini first worked on a movie right here in the town where I'm standing, on Death Dream. John Marley plays the father of the family. He also played the dude that woke up with the horse head in his bed in The Godfather. And right here, this Terminator looking guy right there, wearing the gloves and the glasses as he does in the movie, that is Richard Backus, and he played Andy Brooks, the zombie. The actors were great, the film was well made, written by Alan Ornsby, directed by Bob Clark, who would later direct Porky's A Christmas Story and Black Christmas. This film went way under the radar and is a cult classic to many horror film lovers to this day, including myself. I have been so excited to come out here and share these locations with you and to see them for myself. They uh, took some digging. There are some uh, that have never been shared before. I think actually 95% of what you're gonna see today has never been showed before. So welcome to the filming locations of Death Dream, also known as Dead of Night. I am Tampa J and there is much ahead. And for the first Death Dream filming location, we come a short walk from downtown, down this brick road here on South Brookville Avenue, 312 South Brookville Avenue is the Brooks home from Death Dream. Now keep in mind, Brooksville, the Brooks family. I think that was intentional if I had to guess, but this house right here, this beautiful home decorated for the 4th of July is where they filmed exterior and interiorly a majority of the film. And during this filming locations video, I will be showing you the then and now comparisons, the screen grabs from the movie to what the locations look like right now. And this is the widest angle you see of the Brooks house in Death Dream. This is the only like daytime shot. I mean, look at this, different angle. I'm on the other side, but it hasn't changed too much. And over here on this side, this corner of the house is where the scene was the scene was filmed when Andy Brooks strangles the family dog in front of all the children. He was sitting in a lawn chair right there. That's where they filmed it. Now the camera would have been back in the yard facing this way. I'm trying not to trespass here, but that is where that scene went down. That was a horrifying, terrifying scene. And there's Andy in the lawn chair. That's when they're having the picnic. Uh, before that scene took place where he strangles the dog, but it was the same location Right there. You can see the railing of the house if I go back this way you can kind of make it. Yeah, there you go. There's a better angle Right there Richard Backus The zombie strangled the dog and as that previous scene began the mailman is walking up this sidewalk and I've pinpointed about the same spot because you can make out the hydrant then and now, there's the hydrant right there. The mailman walking up to the Brooks house and joins the Brooks family and Andy right there for the picnic. That's, that's pretty cool, that, that hydrant is still down there. Now, I knew this house was somewhere in Brooksville, but I had to really dissect the movie and take screenshots for clues. In this screenshot here, you can clearly see the house number 312. That's what led me to find 
the location of the house. So if you look closely in the dead center of the screen, there's a diamond shaped window. Now this is the exterior obviously, but in this screenshot, this is the moment when Andy reveals himself uh, to his family when he first comes home and they learn that he was not killed in Vietnam or little did they think, but you can make up that window here on the outside. So that scene took place right in the doorway of the house. That's a creepy sound. There's a bird above me. Here's a close up of the front door where you see many times in the movie when Henderson Forsyth and John Marley, Mr. Brooks, are walking down this sidewalk together and when Andy's coming out the door with the sunglasses and the leather gloves on, he was, he was hiding uh, up the fact that his eyes were becoming zombified and he had a gash in his hand. But yeah, you can clearly make out that this door right here is the same then and now. You can also see 312 on the door and this gate here, the post, can be seen right in front of Andy in this screenshot, right there to his left and to his right. Check it out today. That's awesome, I love that stuff. And here's a screen grab at the end of the film when the police surround the house as, as Andy is being escorted to the car by his mom. You see a police car, Brooksville police car, parked right here before the house. This is where it would have parked. And you know that because you can make out the windows and the pillars of the house behind it. Here you go, check it out. Then check out the house there, especially those two pillars right there. Yeah, so Andy and his mom flee the house. They're heading to the old Brooksville Cemetery, but they, they come out this way. The car catches fire and they head towards downtown, which is this way, but they, they take a left right here onto Lulu Street. Walking down there to show you, I'm showing the screenshot. This is a police officer, a Brooksville police officer, trying to get Andy through the window after shooting him two times. Now here's the screenshot. It's a very dark, very dark movie, 19, uh, early 1970s, but you can see the car going off on fire. You can make out the police officer kind of in the distance in the middle, in the blue shirt. But Lulu Street made out on the sign standing here today at that same corner, much has changed. Also, it's very dark in the movie, but the car would have took a left this way. And in reality, would have had to make a right down there to go up to the Brooksville Square where the next filming locations took place in the movie. But yeah, I just wanted to show you that Lulu Street, you can make out that sign in the movie and here today, Lulu Street in South Brooksville. So the movie began here in Brooksville with a knock on the door that their son had been killed. The Brooks family was awakened by a knock at the door from an army informant that their son had been killed in Vietnam and the upstairs on the adjacent side right up there, that was Andy's room. And that's where he was always creepily rocking in a rocking chair. There was something about a rocking chair and him always rocking that really gave an eerie, creepy effect to this movie. And for the next filming location, we come to Brooksville's most iconic place to eat. Actually, probably the most iconic spot in all of Brooksville. This is where the king of rock and roll ate himself back in the summer of 1961 while following his dream, filming his ninth movie musical. We've been here before, ladies and gentlemen. Coney Island Drive-In. Coney Island Hot Dog with a Frisch's Big Boy. But this was a filming location. There was a scene that went down right here in Death Dream. And here's the screen grab. I paused it just right. You can make out the car about ready to take a ride into Coney Island. Here we are today. Still see a street sign here and make out the embankment. And you can tell that that car would have turned right there and parked right in front of the old drive-in. Now, it's not a drive-in today, technically. It's a walk up and order or go inside, but they used to bring food out to your car. I just wanted to match up the similar angle as well. You can make out a turn sign just like this one in the screen grab as the car is about to park there in the parking spot. Also, 
the awning right here is still there then and now and this wall it's been painted yellow but if you look at those three things right here here and the sign pole you can make it out then and now eat where elvis ate so good to be back here being a huge elvis presley fan did the filming locations to follow that dream which was filmed right here near here so cool to be back okay i decided to grab a short dog and something to drink it's hot and i'm hungry and i don't want to end up like those fellas and as i'm sitting here waiting for my diggity dog i have determined that the car parked in this spot right here this handicapped spot in the movie just because of the angle of the building and the wall out there as you see the reverse angle of the car backing out and pulling in this is where the scene went down this is when Andy actually accidentally reveals that his hand is badly hurt to Joanna in the back seat and he gives that creepy stare with the Terminator style glasses that all went down in this parking spot right here this is the scene at Coney Island hot dog it's so awesome hot diggity dog mustard and onions two dollars and 39 cents there you go had to get me a a hot diggity one and i cannot leave without showing you this guy putting the ketchup on the scalp and for the next filming location we come a couple blocks down from cody island this is jefferson and broad north broad street north of downtown highway 41 the bar where mr brooks comes after his son murders his own dog he comes to have a drink the bar was right here hilltop bar saloon since 1952 now it is currently closed but this inside is where that scene went down mr brooks is in there having a drink his son just murdered his dog choked him in front of a lot of younglings back home he's in here venting and then in walks henderson foresight doc allman and he tells him the whole story and a conversation takes place inside here at the bar and then doc allman goes back with Mr. Brooks to check on Andy, on his son, to see what's going on. Now, this bar closed down a few years back. It is said that it almost looks exact as it did in the movie with, with the old like wooden walls and whatnot. I wish we could get inside or at least peek inside the window, but right here at 504 Broad Street is where the bar scenes were filmed, right inside this door. Very cool to see this building still standing. Oh my gosh, there's a dead armadillo. The remains of an armadillo right there. For the door, that's terrifying. That's horrific. And for the next dead of night death dream filming location, we come to my favorite scene right here at 700 Ponce de Leon, right here, south of Brooksville. This is where Dr. Allman's office was. This is where he performed the autopsy and this is where he was slain by Andy in the back in the office. Now this took some digging. Actually, it took a lot of research to find this location. I, I found this so naturally uh, just by clicking around on Google Maps and matching up screenshots to buildings. The building has changed, but it hasn't. Okay, here's the screen grab. This is when you first see the outside of the building. Henderson Foresight walking up to the front door. He breathes past, you can make out this structure in the screenshot and definitely the wall and these sticking out right here. These pylons sticking out of the roof of the building. It is a dark shot, but you can make out all of that. The brick and in the next couple screen grabs, the lights are the same as they were back then, then and now too. And here's a screen grab when Dr. Allman turns around because he hears something. Later we know it was Andy following him back here. But check out the lights in the screen grab. The same right there on either side of the door. Those are the same lights, guys. That's, that's amazing. And after the body is discovered, Doc Allman being brought out. On the stretcher here the door frame the brick exactly the same again the lamps then and now very cool 
to match up the screenshot right here. This is so cool. About when I was going to leave, the owner invited me in to see the inside of the when building. We, when we bought the building, this is Dr. Escamilla's building when they filmed it, or okay. whatever it was. And we bought it from, from them. And Oh, wow. Gator, it's okay, buddy. I can s It's okay, leave him alone. He's a good Oh, you got the poster right there. Yeah. That was it. And so this this wall we put up, Gator. Hey, it's okay. Cute doggy. This wall we put up, it was an open room when when we bought the when we bought the building. I see the walls, some of the walls are still the same. These are the same. The we original walls. The upper part. So take oh. it right here. It's like a little racetrack going around this. Okay. Thing. Wow, this is cool. Okay, so this is the exam room. Yep. This is where Andy gets Henderson Forsyth. You can still make out the counter where the counter was before the cabinet. Mm -hmm. Right there, so that means, yeah, that moment happened right there. That's so cool. So he would have fell down to the floor right there. Right. That's so rad. And look at this, the outlet right there yeah, to the right. The lights that came off the wall. There's still an outlet there. This is where the kill happened. Andy killed him. Oh, he was laying right down there. Can't see it because there's a shelf there, but he would have been laying there in the corner of the room. And this is the doctor's actual office. Still an office today. That's not the same desk, is it? No, no. Oh, okay. It could be as weird as that man. I remember seeing the windows behind them. And this is where they first, this is where the doctor starts examining um, Andy as he's uh, basically diagnosing him. You know, it was pretty gnarly. And we've kind of worn it out now, but when we restored it back in 07, it was real, real nice. Real yeah. Um, Quick pit stop at the Brooksville 7-Eleven. It is hot out there. Oh my gosh, I needed some water. And some sour gummy bears too. Also, abandoned Taco Bell alert. Abandoned Taco Bell. For the next filming location, I had to park my car behind the shopping plaza. I'm heading over here to Lamar Boulevard to show you the former site of one of the most awesome filming locations that has ever been destroyed, an old school drive-in theater. I hate to see those things go, especially theaters, especially drive-in, but it used to sit right over here. Also, there's a crow right up there. The crows are going wild right now. 575 Lamar <laughs> Avenue. Present day. Oh no, the crows, they're, They've spotted me. Okay, I'll go back to this. Hold on. What did I do? It's, ra it's raining crows and they can't crow all the time. Okay, as I was saying, right here, present day, Northbrook Center of Rehab and Healing. This is the site of the former classic, classic 41 Drive-In Theater that opened in 1957, formerly 41 Drive-In, then the 41 Drive-In Theater was, was a filming look. Man, they follow me everywhere. Is a, no, they just keep coming. Hold on, let me, let me redo this. Hey guys, will you let me, will you let me do this? What's the matter? You know, they say they remember you and I always feed the crows when I see them. So maybe they're hungry. Maybe I fed these two before. They're so smart. Maybe not. So the scene that was filmed at the former drive-in took place right after the Coney Island hot dog. It was the date night. Andy goes full zombie while they're watching the movie. He kills his girlfriend, kills his sister's boyfriend, and then almost kills his sister before running over someone leaving the drive-in. This was horrific, and it's one of my favorite scenes as well. And we're not too far from the doctor's office as well. It's just right over there. But very cool to see where the drive-in theater used to sit. I love drive-ins. I hate that it's gone. My hometown drive-in back in Newcastle, Indiana, the Skyview was torn down a couple years ago, and that broke my heart. That was where I first saw a movie in a drive-in, and also the Tampa drive-in on Hillsboro, 
uh, uh, Hillsborough Boulevard back in Tampa, the Funland Drive-In closed down last year. So it's always it's always a, a somber feeling coming to filming <laughs> locations that have been wiped out, especially ones that used to be drive-in theaters or theaters. So very cool to be out here. It's now a rehab center. I'm sure they're doing wonders out here. I'm sure they're doing a lot better than Andy did out here back in Death Dream. The drive-in, it, it was an awesome scene. An awesome scene that took place here at the former drive-in theater that closed in 1986, a long time ago. The last movie shown here I read online was Wildcats, Goldie Hawn, right here at Lamar. This is the back side of the filming location. I parked right over there. And the crows, I don't know what you want from me. Don't follow me to the cemetery. Don't do that. I'll be there eventually. That would be spooky, wouldn't it? Cemeteries and crows. And for the next filming location, we come to Allen's Florist, where Joanne, I think I've been saying Joanna, it's Joanne, Andy's girlfriend worked, and the scenes were filmed right here inside this building. This is where Joanne learns that her boyfriend Andy has come back from Vietnam via his sister and her boyfriend visit and tried to get her to go on a blind date and she resists to go from a prior experience and also she's thinking that you know her boyfriend's still in Vietnam but then she gets it out of them that the date is actually with Andy and that they will be going to the drive-in later that evening together. So that was filmed right here at 277 Bailey. Um, Jane Daly is the actress that played uh, Joanne. Again, not Joanna, Joanne. And those scenes went down right inside here. Are you watching? Are you watching out? Are you the uh, watch cat? I'll let you go. I'll leave you be. Looks like they're taking care of you here too. But there you go. Shout out to Chris, my girl. We've got some plants right there. And here's a look inside the flower shop where those scenes went down the front counter. Okay, I may have debunked this filming location a little bit. There's a church in a giant steeple out the glass in the movie, out the window. I don't, I don't see a church there, but there is a church back this way. This is kind of making me think that this Allen's Florist was not always here. This might not be the filming location. All right, I'm going to do a little detective work right now during the video. The only thing I can think is there used to be a window on this side of the building because the church in the screenshot, I'll show you in a second, is right over here. Now this old filling station, downtown loser, very cool looking, and I'm sure that was here back in 1972, along with the church that you can see out the flower shop glass. That can be seen clear as day. Now, the shop, the flower shop, Allen's Flower Shop is down the hill over there. All I can see or think is that they were actually standing in the back side of the shop or the flower shop used to sit here. But that's an old house too, so there you go. A little mystery, but it is said that that scene took place at Allen's. I think the former entrance where they shot the scene was on the back side. Because you can see the steeple in this church clear as day behind the glass there, out front of the side of the shop. So they didn't move the church. So there you go. A little mystery there, but definitely confirms, you know, the location of the angle of the camera and the flower shop, Allen's flower shop little detective work. And also, I cannot leave Allen's Florist and not mention that there's a flamingo. It's a faded flamingo, but it's still a flamingo right there. This looks like it used to be an antique store with a flamingo. Oh man, I wish we were still in business. I bet there's flamingos in there right now. I bet there is flamingo. If you didn't know, I have a thing for the mingos. Fla. Mingus. And for the next filming location, we come to the historic Brooksville Cemetery. To where the ending scene took place and also a scene prior earlier in the film was filmed right out here at the Brooksville Cemetery when Andy, later we know Andy, was marking his gravestone. 
this is very eerie guys I already parked my car inside there and I've already just taken a look pinpointed some of the gravestones that were in the movie I want to point out that there was a similar entrance that looked like this one although I think the one in the movie was built because the car crashes through it and there was also a Brooksville Cemetery sign just like this in wrought iron I'll show you the screenshot of the car um, Andy's mom Christine Brooks driving her son to bury him basically as the police are chasing she crashes through the cemetery gate right here John D Ayers this headstone a quick screen grab in the movie as the scene the first scene begins here in the cemetery this is what led me here and look I have found that exact tombstone you can also make out this too then and now in the screen grab John D Ayers so Andy was walking directly behind, you can make out his feet, behind the tombstone here. Also that rectangular stone down there to the right. John D. Ayers. That was our clue. So he would have walked from the gate and he would have walked this way. And I already see a tombstone over here he would have brushed by. Woodman of the World Memorial. Now I've seen a lot of these old tombstones, especially around... Florida around the Tampa Bay area. It's in the shape of a tree trunk right there. This is Mr. Whiteman. White, Mr. Whiteman died in 1913. Little did he know his tombstone would be featured in Death Dream. A shot of Andy right here breezing by Mr. Whiteman. There you go. Here's about the same angle right here. You can make out the insignia of the woodsman of the world and this notch. Andy Brooks, right there in Death Dream. That's pretty gnarly, check it out. Okay, I've seen a lot of spooky headstones in my life, but this one, this one takes the cake. Ooh. Is, it, is he looking at us? Oh my gosh, so spooky. That's right across from that. Stop looking at me, sailor. Now it appears that he stops right here, but from the next screen grab, the next angle, I don't see any of the tombstones that looks like these right here, especially this. This would be very identifiable. I do not see that. I'm thinking they may have filmed this scene in another area. I wanna point out that I'm passing General, Brigadier General William Wilson's grave of New York City, Geneva, New York was buried here January 6, 1937. Hmm. I can hear the crows. They followed me. Oh no. You know, I do this often, especially for filming locations. I've spent a lot of time in graveyards the past three or four years. The longest time I ever spent in a graveyard was going back to one in Chicago for two days, spending about three hours total uh, for backdraft trying to find just a, a simple headstone which I never did a lot of times they'll build like a tombstone or a gravesite off-site because they don't want to dig obviously they don't want to dig among the graves that are already existing who wouldn't want to do that so that's that's where the Hollywood takes effect inside the graveyard scenes there's the two crows they followed me all the way here I'm across town <laughs> Come out, come out, wherever you are. Church bells behind me. In the distance somewhere. Here. You gotta listen closely. So this gravestone behind Andy Brooks here, Richard Backus, looks to be the mother mary and that's what i was looking for because right there he is engraving his name with a rock and later that's the grave where he tries to bury himself as his mother and himself enter the graveyard as the car is on fire and the police shortly behind them and i believe just because of the 
gravestones I already matched up that that was in this area right here at one point and there's nothing right here so I'm thinking they utilized this spot for the tombstone now that's just a theory but that after searching the entirety of the Brooksville Cemetery is the most logic thing to me that Mother Mary tombstone could have been placed just for the movie, just to kind of keep, give it a creepy effect. But I believe that happened just right here. Just a theory, but it definitely was filmed in the Brooksville Cemetery, confirmed with the tombstones I just showed you prior. And now, heading back out of the cemetery. Do not follow me home. I came in peace, and now I leave in peace. Just felt a raindrop got a couple more things to show you guys and that's it hopefully I get out of Brooksville Ooh. before it rains here's the thunder the thunder and at that point at the end of the movie as the police the Brooksville Police Department surrounding Andy and his mother at the cemetery it was horrifying watching him try to dig his own grave full-on zombie again Tom Savini's first movie Andy Brooks would have been Tom Savini's first zombie on the big screen his, his first take with the makeup as far as the undead just think about that right here in Brooksville death dream very cool I'll live for that stuff I cannot roll through Brooksville and not mention that one of Florida's most haunted mansions, the Mary Stringer House and Museum, is present among the filming locations as seen before on this channel. Hello there. Ooh, very eerie with the lightning in the background. I don't know if you saw that. There went the thunder. Whoa. Could have not, I could not have designed that myself. It's full out raining now. Looking for a certain house. Oh, I think I just found it. Holy cow, this is it. All right, this is Joanne's house. Looks a little bit different though. This is definitely it. Okay, here's the screen grab. Andy is actually a peeping Tom. He is creepily stalking his girlfriend who does not know he's back from Vietnam yet. He's standing right here before the house in the screenshot. You can definitely make out the railing up here and the awning. The house is now yellow. I'm, I'm getting soaked here. But I'm showing you that this window right up here was the window, jo Joanne's bedroom. And you can see that to the right there in these screen grabs and then there's a quick shot of Andy uh, a shot looking back from the house but this is Joanne's house amazing found it in the rain oh wow brick street here this is on the other side of town nowhere near Andy's house on the other side of downtown Brooksville begin June 1st are you ready for hurricane season uh, I hope I am. As you can see, we're heading back downtown. Back to where we all started. Back to where we started. Oh. Got the red light. And welcome back to the Hernando County Courthouse. Right here between Highway 98 and Highway 41. Actually, this is Broad Street. This is technically Highway 41. So, the camera never showed the Hernando County Courthouse right here where we started the video. It was actually pointing back this way twice in the movie. There were two scenes where Andy's car, Andy's mom, Christine's car, are driving down the street here. The first time Andy's in the car driving and he's following Henry Forsyth to the doctor's office. And the scene starts as the car takes off this way, takes a left in front of these buildings, these shops, and then hangs a right by that bank. Ooh. Okay, the rain died down just enough, just past this giant live oak tree. 
I am going to show you a screenshot over here of this building. Oh, and I have to point out the Brooksville mermaids. There is a scavenger hunt downtown Brooksville of all the mermaids. We are in the same county as Weeki Wachee, so a salute to those mermaids here throughout Brooksville. I, I believe I showed that before the last time I was here in Brooksville in that video. Just had to point that out right here before the monument and the courthouse. Right there, in the bottom of the well. Well, at the top. Christine Brooks and her zombie son Andy are in the car right here. Actually, they're coming down this way. They would be coming against traffic today. This is a one-way, 41 North. They would have been coming this way. And there's a quick moment, a screen grab, where you can make out this monument and those windows right here. Notice the windows, one, two, three, four. Those are right there, one, two, three, four. And this monument right here in the screenshot, this is Broad Street, present day Highway 41. Also Andy, earlier when he was following Dr. Henderson Forsyth, he took off from this light as the doctor turned this way as well. So two scenes were filmed right out here before the Hernando County Courthouse in downtown. The chase scene in the end with the fiery car and the following of Henderson Forsyth by Andy Brooks, Richard Backus, right there at the corner of Broad. Also very important, the diner scene in the beginning of the film, that was filmed at the Colony Restaurant on South 41, which is no longer there. Now that took some digging to find uh, that restaurant. There are some screenshots of the sign, which I'll, I will put in right now. That was my clue to figure out that that was the Colony Restaurant and that it used to sit on Highway South Highway 41, south of Brooksville. So that location is gone. But entirely filmed here in Brooksville, death dream, dead of night. Such an honor to track down these filming locations on this fine evening. I love the weather. It, that was awesome. I didn't find everything I thought I was going to find, but I also found locations I didn't think I was going to find. So this should be probably the most in-depth video ever uh, to drop on YouTube as far as this subject matter, this movie. And if you've seen it, I hope you appreciated the video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you haven't seen it, go check out Death Dream, Dead of Night. It's on YouTube. Also, you can buy the Blu-ray as I did on, uh, on Amazon Prime or on Amazon if you have Prime, I don't know. But that will do it. This is the end of the video. If you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up. And if you subscribe below, come on back. I'd much appreciate that. If you like filming locations, I have covered a ton of filming locations here on this channel. There is a filming locations playlist on the main page of my YouTube channel, so go check it out. It's been a while since I've cranked out a filming location. I believe the last one I did was Rocky II in Philadelphia. So if you missed that, go check that out. And also the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Did that in Texas earlier this year. There is much behind and much ahead here on this channel as far as filming locations, baseball, roadside attractions, whatever I'm into, that's typically what comes out. And I've been given the gift of time most of the time. And when I get that time, you know, I love to fire up the camera and take you all with me. But thanks for joining me, guys. I won't keep you too much longer. i got to head back to Tampa. Just a short drive, only an hour back to my apartment, back to Chris the Girl. Shout out to Chris the Girl. I miss you. See you soon. Well, I've already seen you by now after you're watching this video. All right. Bye, everyone. Know you're awesome. Know you're loved. And know there's much ahead for today's creature feature here in Brooksville. It is gone. I think the storm's coming back. All right, guys, see you later. Peace. Look at that sky. That looks bad. It looks tornadic. It's a good way to end it. All right, guys, see you next time. Hope you enjoyed it, Death Dream fans, Dead of Night. I hope you did. Bye-bye. Also, shout out. To people watching this from Brooksville, I hope you enjoyed the unique tour around your hometown. Have a good night, everyone. Be safe out there. Know you're awesome, know you're loved, and know there's much ahead.